Hey there friends, it is me HL My Tech, and I got a package in the mail today, so I think we should unbox it and see what it is. Alrighty. Just a couple days after Christmas. Still getting gifts, which is pretty doggone cool. It is a mini engraving machine. So it is a laser. And this is extra cool because recently I obtained a Glowforge. So we'll be able to compare how the $100 engraving machine can compete with the almost $4,000 Glowforge. Protective material. material, accessory box, Put that off to the side, let's check the accessories first, ooh some things that we can engrave with, looks like it's powered off USB, well let's see what that is, user's manual, it's got English pages 1 through 13 and German after that, we'll read through that before we plug anything in, and Let's check out the packaging. All right. So this is the tiny laser. It's got this little strip that says, please remove. So let's remove that quick. Easier to grab underneath it. This was the machine test, turned a butterfly into a cocoon. All right, so this was created by Nay J. At least I think that's how we say it. There's another piece of tape over here that I have to remove. That is the one that's actually holding the laser in place. If we look at it over here from the side, you can see inside it, that is the laser. Here's the USB port. Looks like a power switch. It's got a 1 amp or a 500 milliamp choice and then off. So you can uh, switch the power. And I think at that point, I'm going to go read the manual and see what I can do with it. All right, so friends, in the manual, all they tell us is to remove all the tape, turn on the power switch, and connect it to the computer. It'll go into preparation, and we're going to use the gray cardboard, which you can see I've already got in place. That came with it, and that's what it's built to calibrate with. It's ready to do the default settings, and there's no need to do any adjustment. It's just going to carve at the level of the bearing table, maybe have focusing glasses. If we have those, I don't have any. But we're just going to adjust it manually. Let's see how this works. All right, so here's my power switch. I can see the switch, but I can't tell which one is which. There's no label there. So I'm going to assume it's on off, and then I'm going to push it up towards the top, which will be the highest power. Holy crap, it runs on batteries? Because it's not plugged into anything. How in the world is that happening? And I found one more piece of foam that I'm going to remove. Alright, so let's power that back off. Now that it surprised the heck out of me by moving and lighting up. Alright, so this is where I found out on the website that there is a foam battery in here. And we need to charge it before we can use it. You have to find your own 1 amp adapter. And it says to charge for a half hour. So I'm going to plug it in, let it charge up with that very same data cable. And then we'll come back in a bit to see what we can engrave. All right, so let's prepare for that first print. Uh, let's get our cardboard under the 
little rubber bands to hold it in place and then use the little dial to get your beam so it's focused. I'm trying to do this so you can see my fingers in there twisting it and I just want that as focused as the beam can be. All right, let's move on to the next step where we get the software set up. While we're waiting for it to charge, let's track down the software. I'll put it nice and big and bold in the description, but it's also right here. It's N-E-J-E club slash DBL HTM. Press enter and it'll take us to the website where it gives us the driver install. Let's click and start that downloading. I'm going to just save it in my apps folder. Let's scroll down and find the software. Put it in the same folder. You'll notice those both downloaded pretty quick. It mentions the .NET framework, but that's built into most Windows nowadays, so I don't think we need to worry about it. Later, I'll give the Android app and the iOS app a test, but right now we're gonna stick to just Windows. Let's install that driver super quick by double clicking it, telling it yes, and letting it install the little parts it needs. And as easy as that, it was installed. Let's go down to the software, and if we double click it, the web page showed an entire setup, but I'm gonna tell you to just be patient and look down at the bottom of your screen you will eventually see the app launch. And that tricked me for a little while when I first clicked it because I could not see it, yet it was showing up. It has been a half hour, so let's plug in my engraver and let's see if it shows up. All right, so there you have it. Uh, switched the switch to one amp on the side, pushed the red button on top to power it up, and then made sure the data cable was plugged into my PC and we have a connection. Now if you hit the photo gallery, uh, this the first time I launched it took a while to load all those photos, but now there are tons of photos that you can choose from. You can filter them to what you want, bring in whatever piece you want, and it is ready to be engraved. They recommend that we try it on the cardboard. I'm going to clear this screen and I'm going to switch back to that photo gallery and I'm going to go to all. And I want to load this first one just because it's kind of cool and I'm going to keep the default size. I've got my cardboard on the board and let's hit start and see what happens. Alright, so this is on the cardboard. And this is what was built into the system. I turned it on and it said the engraving machine was not ready. I was trying to find what to click next and I hit the word start. And lo and behold, it's actually printing. So hey, we get our first print despite me not really knowing what I'm doing. All right, so I found on the settings screen that I can adjust the burning time and the laser power. So I just dropped it down to 60% instead of 100%, and I took the speed, the 10 milliseconds. Uh, the speed was at 15 or 13 milliseconds, and I took it down to 9 now just to make it move a little quicker. Um, just, you know, testing out how this actually works. Nice to know that you can adjust it on the fly.
All right, that's a good enough test. I'm going to hit reset. It cancels right out. And then I'm going to stop recording and actually check out our project. So there's the design that was being made. Uh, it's really crisp. Almost looks like ink instead of burning. You can see here where I dialed down the percentage to 60% laser and made it a quicker pass. It really, really changed how the item was done. They call this gray paper. Uh, I'm going to go try some of my own paper and let's see what we get. So this is just part of a box I cut out and put under the rubber bands and then I grabbed a Lion's JPEG and I took that and I just drug it from File Manager right into the app and with the default settings I let it run. That's more than 35 minutes uh, to make it that size but you can see that it did uh, make a real nice mark. Uh, it does rub off if you touch it though. A little bit of darkness comes off. So you'd probably want to seal these so that you wouldn't lose that effect. Uh, soon I'll test it on wood, but for right now, I'm going to say that this is a pretty nifty little laser engraver. Uh, for under $100, you get a tool that almost instantly can engrave cool projects of your choice on cardboard paper. And hopefully soon, we'll test out wood. Friends, if you found this movie useful, please hammer that like button. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. If you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from me, HL Montech, hit that notification bell. And if you've got a question or a comment, leave it down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.